I was so excited, like, oh my God, it's coming out. Oh. So my dad would prophesy all these things and they came to pass. And it's just like, man, <laughs> man. <laughs> preach the gospel at all times and when necessary, use words. Hey guys, welcome back to Kubistra Music YouTube channel. Right now we're in Jam Talk. This is a session where I get together with a friend of mine, a musician, who actually I admire a lot. Last time we had Kia um, coming in over and then we have a great conversation, so we had a great jam. And today I have Kevin Chong, Kevin Michael Chong. He's a badass drummer and I'll let him tell you what he has done over the years and it's pretty inspiring and then his personality is also very inspiring to me. So I'm looking forward for this gem talk. Definitely. Thank you for having me, Akub. I really sure. appreciate it. Man. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. <laughs> well, you can always, you can always uh, uh, edit, you know, like this part. No, I'm going to keep it. You're going to keep it? Yeah. Oh, okay. All the right. stupid stuff, I'm going to keep it. <laughs> Especially the stupid stuff. Yeah, the bloopers are great, man. They're yeah. good memories. Yeah. yeah. So tell me about yourself, uh, Kev. What's your name? Kevin? Yeah, Kevin. Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> You only know me for like the last five years. I know, I know. Uh, well, a little bit about myself, huh? Well, I am uh, American Peruvian. My family is originally from uh, uh, Lima, Peru. Lima, which Peru. Is, yeah, South America. Delicious food. Culture mm -hmm. is great. Music is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was born here in the United States. My parents were both from there. Um, I got into music at a very young age. I was maybe around eight years old when mm -hmm. I started uh, playing drums and percussion at, mm -hmm. at my local church out in LA where I used to live. Um, I moved to the Inland Empire in like 2005, okay. somewhere around there. Big change for my 15 whole 15 years ago. Yeah, 15 years ago. Yeah, it's been a long time now, you know, so it's not as congested, uh -huh. you know, not, not so busy out there, which I yeah. kind of like, you know, a lot more open streets. Um, and things like you know that nature but um yeah i've been playing music since i was eight i grew up wow. in the church um mostly doing ccm music christian contemporary music mm -hmm. which is very popular in the church nowadays which a funny story i i, I kind of want to share this yeah. is that when i when i was getting into drums uh hillsong was becoming this the this, hits the hits right they, they were coming out it wasn't hillsong young and free which is i think it was hillsong united uh -huh. and i used to absolutely despise hillsong because, why, why is that? Because as a drummer, you're looking for things that are interesting. You're right. lo looking for rhythms or, or beats or cadences, something that will catch the drummer's eye or the musical ear. Right. And, and CCM music was so simple, so easy to so play. So straightforward. You could, exactly. You could memorize the parts within one take, right. you know, versus right. learning a, a Fred Hammond song or a Kim Burrell song. It takes you more time, obviously, because you mean gospel, exactly gospel music, where it's a little bit more complicated in that mm -hmm, sense. Mm -hmm. And so I remember I used to tell the worship leader, I don't want to play a song, I don't want to play this type of music. It's too easy for the church. Yeah. But funny enough, it's it, that's actually what's what works best for the for the average listener. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. the the easier it is for somebody to, to retain uh, a chorus of a song or rhythm or music, whatever the case is, the easier it is for the congregation to to clap along right, right. And to, to enjoy the music if you have three verses that are all different every single time with a lot three of different chords, a lot of hits yeah. it's hard for the congregation to connect right and so um, so you know so so at a very young, young age I, I didn't like hillsong and then i started to you know i when i moved out here is when I, when i was introduced more to it 15 uh -huh. years ago and then i was like you know what maybe as a musician i should try to appreciate the simplicity of it uh -huh. of it as well and I actually ended up really enjoying it. Now there's okay. Jesus Culture, there's Elevation Worship, yeah. Planet Shakers, all, yeah. the, all these different you know songs. But CCM is still as simple as it may sound. It's still its own thing. Right. You know what I mean. You right. still have to learn the parts. There are certain kick patterns, tom patterns, snare patterns, cadences right. that that go along with drumming and CCM music that right. you know are very well known. Um, but, you know, yeah, I grew up playing CCM, gospel music. Um, I got into country a couple years ago, which okay. was a lot of fun. Wow. And then I love Latin music. That's kind of like my, th my dad was a huge salsa fanatic, you know. Oh. Uh, there's a, a, there's this, I don't know if it's a record label. 
Uh, but it used to be known as Fania All Stars. It had mm-hmm. Sheila Cruz, Tito Puente, Willie Colon, all these uh, Puerto Rican artists. I think they had a mixture, maybe some Cuban art, because Sheila was Cuban. Um, but they had a lot of different um, uh, singers in there that my dad always would play. The, the, you know, at, at, at our get-togethers, he'd always yeah. play salsa music. You know, so I've been in, involved in music basically all my life. You know, now I've, I'm 29 now, so wow. yeah, almost almost 20 years. So. He, is your dad a musician? My dad was a percussionist. Yeah, he was. Oh, uh, no he, wonder. Yeah, yeah. He played. He played uh, timbal. He played uh, or timbales. Uh, he played congas, a little bit of bongos, and cowbell. Every time he wow. had this cowbell with the stick, with the mallet, or whatever you want to call it, he'd have it by his radio station. And the funny mm-hmm. thing is, anytime we do these these uh, get-togethers or these parties, mm-hmm. no one could touch his radio station. No one could touch the 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 music. Like he would be oh. the one controlling. He's the DJ. He's the DJ. And it would be almost 99% salsa all the time. Salsa merengue, but he didn't like anything slow, no ballads, nothing oh. like, he wanted the party to keep going, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my dad, and even then when we became, you know, believers and stuff like that, he tried to find all the Christian salsa artists that there were, you know, try to listen to all of them, you know, and he's like, man, these are actually really, really good. Cause you know, yeah. he grew up listening to some dope uh salsa you know uh artists and musicians mm-hmm. you know so so having that i think uh um you know inspired him to keep trying to search that you right know? and per- and in in salt so- uh in peru salsa is very popular oh so very very popular. well peru what, what is it what is the peruvian music uh there's different styles there's a style called bass music mm-hmm. and there's another one called festejo mm-hmm. um it it's it's almost like um like a f- i would describe it as a funky type of of six eight funky type of six eight so like for example i'll give you a real uh, give you an example like in, in cuban afro-cuban uh-huh. right it would be uh so uh, 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 uh. uh-huh right so in in peru the the when you're playing uh cajon which is somewhere around here the beat would be one two uh uh Wow. What is it called again? It's it's called Bad. Uh, I'm sorry, Festejo. 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 Yeah, which Festejo. is it. You can count it in four. You uh-huh. can fill it in six, eight. Depends, you know. Uh, but Do you yeah. find you how, where your, your mind is at? Is that what... Well, what yeah, yeah. I, I mean, for me, I don't I don't necessarily count anymore unless uh-huh. it's like a really, really compli- you know, complicated song or, uh-huh. you know, we're reading a chart or something like that. Right. But for the most part, I feel the rhythm. Mm-hmm. You right. know, you try to... You know, a lot of... Afro music, and, and I say Afro because there's Afro-Cuban, there's Afro-Caribbean, there's Afro-Peruvian music, which is derives from Africa, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. so there's influence from that style um, that, that we incorporate in, right. in Peruvian music. So, you know, um, that to me is like, you just kind of have to feel where the, where the bell comes in, where the congas come mm-hmm. in, but cajon is a national instrument there. So, so that's oh, very, really? yeah, a lot of people think that cajon originated in Spain with flamenco right, and all that. Right. It's not from Spain. It's, it's actually from, from Peru. From Peru. Oh, and I know this, gosh. I mean, from different lessons that I've had, but also from, you know, being uh, a couple of times with Alex Acuna, who's a well-known percussionist from Peru. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and he has his own cajon line, Tony Sukat, another well-known wow. artist, you know, um, they have their own uh, uh, cajon lines and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. but yeah, the, the, the instrument itself actually is originally from Peru, not, wow. from, not from Spain. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, I know. It's How long ago did you know that? Uh, I, man, I found out when I was a, a boy. A boy, wow. yeah, and a lot of people will insist that it's a it's a, a Spanish instrument, you know, and it is used in Spanish music, right. you know, right. but 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 it actually is originally from Peru. We've been talking about like music, but I want to uh, retrace a little bit. Mm-hmm. You're talking about your family become a believer. Yeah. When did when did that happen? What was that before that? And the reason why I'm saying this is because I really admire your um, not independency. But your, your tenacity in being a Christian, mm-hmm. being, being such a believer, you don't drink. Every time we have a function on a party, <laughs> you declare yourself like, I don't drink. Like, yeah. give me something else. And yeah. Because I know it's hard for a lot of people, especially for a lot of believers or people who are growing up, you know, trying to fit in in the society as Christians, as a believer. Yeah. Because that's difficult, you know, it to is. not drink in a in the social function like that. Tell me about that. So the way we got, the way we became believers is when I was about eight or nine years old, somewhere around there, it's been a long time now, Mm -hmm. I got really sick. Um, It was an issue with my stomach. I had, we had gone to this pizza joint in Los Angeles um, where it was called New York Pizza. 
<laughs> so you already know it's not good, but but we <laughs> so New York you, pizza yeah, in Los New York Angeles. pizza in Los Angeles, and and, uh, and it's not like it was in downtown LA. It was like we're more in like West West LA, Southgate is the city. And um, I went there. I had you know New York pizza, and that very night I basically threw up all of it. You know okay. all the stuff you can think of that comes along with stomach issues, nausea, headaches. Uh -huh. You know just feeling ill, not feeling right. Lasted for about three weeks. Oh man! Um, and so we ended up going to the doctor. Um, I I actually spent Christmas in bed, which was the saddest thing wow. for my mom because I love technology. And so right. at that time, you know, I think it was a PS One, PlayStation One, mm -hmm. or, or PS, PlayStation Two. I loved all that stuff, so playing games. I just always would look forward to it. I just have always had this fascination with technology, even to today. Right. You know. I, right. You know. And um, and I remember that I spent a Christmas in bed, and we ended up going to the doctor. How old were you at that time? I was like around eight or nine. Okay. Yeah, somewhere around. Wow. Very, very young. Very young. You know, a boy, a young boy. And uh, they told me I had a, like a stomach bug, basically, okay. in my in in you know in my body. And um, they had given me these these pills that they basically said, look, they're antibiotics. You know, um, they're like, if these don't work, we're gonna have to admit you and have to do surgery. It got so serious that they had to involve the state doctor. And I wow. up to this point, I don't really hear about cases where they involve a state doctor unless it has something to do with, we don't know what's going on. This could be a national issue Crisis. of some sort. You know, right. exactly. You know, you right. just don't know, especially now with the pandemic. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. It's, it's very serious. So they were like, you know, we want to make sure, you know, but I was a young boy, so I didn't know much. And I remember one day my mom was flipping channels um, while she was mopping the floor. And she grew up a believer, but she kind of departed from, from the faith because my dad was... Uh, Catholic, and I say that in quotations because he wasn't an avid Catholic uh, attender. He didn't go to church often. Mm. A lot mm. of times, you know, when they say their people say they're Catholic, they just sometimes say it word of mouth. You know, right. it comes out, but it's not something to actually live by. Right. You know, I'm right. not saying that there aren't people that are actually you know avid Catholics and they, right. they go to church and all that, but he happened to be one of those that said he was Catholic but really right. never went to church. Right. And so you know, my mom met him and they got married and whatever, and and, and I have you know th two brothers and one sister. And um, I remember my mom was, was flipping channels one day and she came to, to my room. I was laying in bed and she told me, tomorrow we're going to church. And I said, church? Like, what, what, what's church? And she's like, don't worry. Like, oh, I'm at the time you were not going to church no, at all? No, I wasn't a believer at all. Oh, wow. I, I didn't know anything about faith. I didn't know anything about God. No, nothing like that. So my mom one day just took me to the church. Um, I met the pastor there and the pastor, you know, uh, um, asked me, what's going on? You know, what, what do you guys need prayer for? You know, like the typical thing. Right. And so I told him, you know, my own way, like, you know, I've been feeling sick. I've been sick the last couple of weeks. We don't know what's going on with my body, um, but I'm just not right, mm -hmm. you know. And so he laid hands on me. He put his hands on my, on my head, you know, um, prayed over me, prayed for healing. And in that week, God healed my body. Wow. And I remember my, my like my, my, butt, sorry, my, my bowel movements were normal, mm -hmm. my, everything, stool, you know, I know it's a little bit. Uh, graphic graphic but I'm right. being as, as transparent as I can because I, I remember I was so excited like oh my god it's coming out of normal it's not diarrhea anymore it's like wow. all these things and so so my mom was crying full of joy my dad still was on the fence my dad actually didn't believe from the very that's, beginning that's, he thought it was the medicine and all that stuff and you know what, what was going on but I had already been taking a bunch of pills and nothing was working and so I remember, you know, God healed me. And, and to me, that's how God became real to me personally, like my own testimony. Wow. I didn't have to wait for somebody to tell me, hey, God is real. real or God has done this or God does these miracles because it was, it happened in my life. It manifested in my wow. own life. So, so it was a huge testimony, you know, for years to come, I still tell it to, uh, till today. And so my mom was very emotional. And then, and then it took my dad months to get into church. My mom kept praying for him though. Right. Kept, kept believing God, you're, you're going to bring my husband to church. And one of these days, he's going to understand what it means to raise our hands and worship or sit down and listen to the word. Right. He didn't understand any of that. He didn't understand why people would raise their hands when worship music would you know, come on right. or anything like that. Right. He didn't really get that. And so, so that going on for months and months, my mom prayed. And then told me, finally, my dad came one day and God just started to change his life. You know, so wow. much so that he... That, we ended up leaving the church that we were at, went to another church, and he started doing a Bible study. And he dove straight in. Like, when I mean straight wow. in, like, he took a Bible course for, like, two and a half years. You know, got ordained wow. and everything. Um, and my dad, you know, uh, uh, you know, always would do, like, 
uh, Sunday, se- not Sunday seminars, but Sunday Bible studies. Mm-hmm. You know, they call it in Spanish Escuela Dominical, uh-huh. you know, which is uh, just basically Sunday school. And so he'd give classes there. He, he gave would, classes? Yeah, he gave classes and stuff wow. like that. He'd do at that. At that time, it was also called cell groups, which in today, I guess you call them foundational groups or just life groups where you right. meet at home, right. talk about the word of God for about an hour and a half, have lunch or, or dinner, dinner, should I say. Yeah. And you you know just kind of discuss the word of God and, and but he he'd have that at our house or you know he'd go to other people's houses and direct and stuff like that so that's how, that's how we got into into wow. faith you know so at a very young age we, I was introduced to that and you know um, at the very beginning my dad like I said it was kind of like this dramatic change because my dad didn't want to do anything with like secular music and he didn't want to do anything to do with like. Radical just, change. Yeah, right. It was it was crazy, you know. I mean, and now that you know we've we've grown up a little bit more, we've matured more in the Word of God. We know that it doesn't take that much. You mm-hmm. don't have to yeah. go that insane and and say I'm not listening to any secular music because as musicians, you know, right. we, we look for inspiration, right. and that unfortunately doesn't always come from, from Christian music, Christ- right? Correct. You know, like like you know, hard. I mean, I can't really think of any Christian jazz albums. You know, like mm, hardly, yeah, you can they're, hardly they're scarce, one. Yeah. you know, yeah. so, so you, you know, you want to listen to music that inspires you and as a musician, you want to continue to grow and develop, right? you know, and if you're not getting that from what you're listening to, well, then you have to stop listening to that and switch to something else, right? right. you know, and so, so, but that was the whole, basically the way we got introduced to faith Wow. Um, at a very young age. So it was, it's to today, you know, it's still a testimony I like to share. Wow, you know? that's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah. I thought you were just growing up as Christians. I thought you were, I know your dad was very involved. Yes. But I don't know that uh, he was from a skeptic, basically, yeah, right? Yeah, right, right, basically. Even after you had the miracle. Yeah. And he's still a, uh, Yeah, a he didn't believe. Person. Yeah, he, he didn't believe, wow. man. It took, it took him months. I, remember, I don't know how long it took him, but I remember it was, it was more than a couple of months. And my mom, but my mom kept believing, kept praying, you know, and that's why the prayer of the righteous availeth much, right. the Bible says, you right. know, and so, so in those situations, it's just like, you just and, and and not only that, but I just say for myself as a as a personal testimony, physically God touched my body, you know, and mm-hmm. I can't explain that, I can't describe that. It's just something that He did, and and I'm forever grateful. Wow. You know? One of your brother is a pastor right now, yes. right? Yeah. Wow. My brother following the footsteps that my dad. dad. And another crazy thing that I want to share too, my dad would do these things, and it, it actually came to pass. Um, my dad took a picture of of us when I was in eighth grade. My brother was in eighth grade. My sister was younger in elementary, and he he cut pictures, little frames of us, put it on a on a on a yellow sheet of paper, mm-hmm. and underneath he would write what we were gonna be. So my dad put wow. it out since I was like like maybe twelve or thirteen years old. He cut a picture because he knew I love music. Uh-huh. He put director of music. Wow. For my brother, he put pastor. For my sister, he put business administration. Wow. And funny enough, my brother is a pastor, you know, I'm a musician, a musician, you know, in some cases I do direct, direct music, music yeah. you know, uh, uh, my sister's involved in the financial district. So that has to do with business. Wow. So my dad would prophesy all these things and they came to pass. And it's just like, man, like that, it's just so incredible that my dad believed this so much. And it, right. and it just, it's not that like. My dad said, you need to do this because I'm telling you to do it. It just kind of came from our own It's ambition. like an impressions. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our, our own desire to become those things, you know? And so my dad just, from a very young age, he did that and it came to pass. And it's just amazing to see that happen, you know? Wow. So, yeah. That's crazy. That's Pretty crazy. incredible. Yeah. I'm, this is the story that I know him for a while, but, you know, like I haven't heard this story until now. So I really get it. <laughs> I'm really happy that I get a chance to talk about these things uh, in depth with you. Well, before we move on to the next uh, conversation, so we're going to play some music, shall yeah, we? Yeah. What are we going to play? Which one are you going to play? Uh, uh, let's do uh, Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad? Yeah. Okay, here we go. This is Feliz Navidad for you.
All right, that's Feliz Navidad. He played incredibly well. I F it up so many times. But we got bothered by the neighbors. So that's <laughs> yeah. my excuse. Yeah. I'm not even kidding about that. But well, we would talk about how he became Christians, how he became a believer. By the way, he had a great podcast uh, featuring a lot of people. Tell the audience about that. So the podcast is basically, is, the show is called Sir Kevin Says. And the gist of the show basically is I, I sit down with individuals that have accomplished amazing things, not just in music, but in different industries, different stuff that, you know, is very popular in today's world, right? You know, journalism, uh, hopefully, eventually I want to get into to people that do acting, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I did just basically interview them um, slash podcast uh, with them about what they've accomplished, their accolades, their setbacks, because we all know that in life, we, we encounter things that happen in our lives that sometimes are unfortunate or very difficult to overcome. So I talk to them about those things, you know, and, and I try to be as transparent as I can with them and they try to be as transparent as they can with me. We talk about everything they've, they've accomplished and what advice they have for those that aspire to do the same. So for Yakub and I that are musicians that look up to Abraham Laboria, for example, you know, um, he we talked, uh, it was about maybe an hour and 40 minute conversation, right. you know, just about his life and all the stuff that he's accomplished. But how do you become such, such a successful musician and also maintain your family. Mm -hmm. Prioritize, you know, the things that God has has given, given you to you. attend to first, right. before music. Right. You know, my dad taught me at a very young age. It's the Lord first, mm -hmm. your family, and then your ministry. Wow. So you can't the have later. Yeah, exactly. You can't have your ministry before your family because if you're not good in here, you know what I'm saying. Right. And, and here, how are you going to be good to share that? Externally, with people that that what do what do you get to share if you got nothing? Exactly, exactly. Wow. So so that's the gist of the show, basically. You know, so so I've been very blessed to, to feature Abraham Laborio, right. Alberto Salas, um, Teddy Campbell, yeah. Aaron Lindsay, a lot of well known you know musicians, musicians both the gospel right. industry and just music industry in general. You know, yeah. and we we, we get to right. do that. So well, you guys you should check that out. I'm gonna put the link in the description below. It's a such a blessing, and then for musicians, there's a lot of great informations. Uh, inside stories and things that are just amazing to yeah. to digest as a musician or as a music, a music enthusiast and it's still a great podcast to you know listen to how can you be uh, a great at something because uh, what he said you know like it's not only a musician you got a journalist right yeah, yeah have some right. Uh, christine divine who's been right. uh, with fox news for yeah. i think the last 20 years now i could be wow. could be right she i don't know she's won like 16 or 17 Emmys the, oh. the organization has. Wow. You know? wow. But, but yeah, really incredible. Really wow. incredible. That's a, that's a success story that, you know, if you want to, if you want to be somebody that, that great, you know, you have to listen to the story of great people yeah, who have achieved good. that. That's really right? good. Well, the reason why I go there is because uh, what I said earlier, I almost see you like a, a younger version of Abe Laboreal because he stood up for his fate so much so that he just, at school, I remember he just talked about about his faith yeah. like to everybody who would yeah. listen to yeah and he's not afraid he's not uh he's not shy away from the faith and right. it, it seems like that's that's what i see you when you're in the social functions a lot of our friends are not believers mm -hmm. and we don't try to choke that or shove it into their in, into their uh, throat but you've been trying to at least to my understanding you've been trying to uh adhere to your faith so greatly so eloquently and so not judgmental. Yeah. Tell me about that. Like, how do you how do you navigate through a musician's life who could be very free, yeah. can be very <laughs> hedonistic, can be all that thing, and still maintain your Christian uh, integrity? Tell me about that. I mean, I think that's that comes just from the fact that my dad was was so adamant about maintaining our beliefs. You know, and mm -hmm. I, and again, I have to. Re go back to what God did for me. Mm -hmm. Like that to me is God healing me, I'm eternally grateful. You know what I'm saying? Because to remember the feeling of feeling sick and nausea every day that you wake up and, and basically all day it's like, and then to go and you now you feel normal. I can consume things and not get sick or, right. you know, things like that. So, so having faith be a part of my life since I was a young boy, it's just stuff that, uh, you know, morals and ethics that you develop as your parents teach you, you okay. know, and, and, and you're rooted in these things because of the time that you spent 
literally going to church every weekend, going to Sunday, you know, they call it vacation Bible school, right. you know, or at, VBS. At, yeah, VBS, exactly. Or they put me into classes where, um, you know, I, I would, you know, uh, I took a Bible course there at, mm -hmm. at my former church as well for like about two months or so, okay. stuff like that, you know, but, but having that just be a part of my roots is something I can't forget, you know, and I don't want to ever shy away from it because God's just blessed me so much with different musical opportunities, blessings to meet people or be at places that I never imagined, you know, right. and, I, and, I, and for me to turn my back and say, I don't need God anymore. I don't need, you know, I don't need church anymore. I don't need accountability anymore. It, it would be mm. foolish to me because God's just been with me along th this whole journey, right. you know, and, and, I, and, and you, 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 keep uh, talking about the, the point of like people that drink and smoke. Like right. for me, I, I, as much as I'm around that stuff, being a musician, I mean, I, I not, right. not only am I, you know, because I am a Christian musician, but you know, I'm around secular musicians right. all the time. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and so for me, I, I never come from a, a place of judgment. I never say, Oh, because you're drinking, I'm you're going to hell. Friend. Right. There's a, a famous saying, um, St. Francis actually says it. And it's, it basically says, preach the gospel at all times. And when necessary, use words. Wow. Which is amazing because it's telling you essentially live your life the as way the gospel. as the gospel instructs you to. And people are going to be attracted to you naturally. And sometimes not even that, but spiritually, they're going right. to see something in you. Like you said, like I never knew that you thought that why doesn't Kevin drink or why doesn't Kevin partake in this right. stuff? You know, I, you notice those things mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I never do them, right. you know, but, but for other people they have the same curiosity. And so that's, those are the moments that I try to take and share the good news with them and, and, and try to show, you know what? I, I grew up a believer. Does it mean that, that Christians don't drink? Right. Does it mean that, you know, we, we occasionally can't mm -hmm. have social mm -hmm. drinking, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. like the Bible says that all things are accessible to me, but not everything is beneficial, right. you know? And, oh. and for, for, for my own thing, mm -hmm. it's just, it's my personal conviction. Well, am I saying that I'll never drink? Probably not. There'll probably be an instance where I'll have some champagne or some celebratory mm -hmm. moment, something like that. Mm -hmm. But for me, I've never, I've never had the the desire, I guess, to try. Even in high school, I never mm. was very, you know, I was very wow. involved in music, so I didn't really. I, I knew a lot of people in high school, even though I wasn't popular. Right. But 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 because I was involved in music, I guess you mm -hmm. become popular by by nature i right, guess in some right, some, some right. regard you know but i never really had that peer pressure so i never felt like oh man i need to try this mm -hmm. i need to go to this party so i can fit in you know right i never right. felt that but i was also around a lot of people that were older than me. i i chose i chose to surround myself with people that even though i was 15 some people were 20 21 right. 22 i tried to listen to you know stuff that they had gone through in their life and to not make the same mistake they'd share those, those stories with me right. or their testimony and it's like you know what i'm not gonna do you know, that do that and all throughout high school, um, I never dated. Four years, wow. I never dated one girl. I was interested, you know, right. in different people, but I never dated. Why? Because my dad said, you cannot be unequally yoked. And you cannot uh, date somebody that isn't of the faith because you guys oh, are not going to coincide. Wow. And, and, and I never met anybody in, 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 high, in high school that really... Shared was, the faith. Yeah, shared the faith like, that, that much, you know. And so, so all throughout high school, you know, I just had a lot of friends and, and you know, I, but it, for me, it was all about music, you know. But, wow. but yeah, my, my convictions, man, my beliefs really is what has kept me all the way through now that I'm 29, you know, and have gone through different things in my life. You know, I, I mean, I've shared that... You know, my, my dad was a big influence. My dad mm -hmm. passed away mm -hmm. back in 2017. Yeah. And so, I you know, I, I mean, I do everything I can now to still honor his legacy, honor what he did for my family, the the moments that he shared with me. You know, I, I, I still remember he would always do devotional times, you know, right. in, in, at our home. And he'd call us all down. We'd be in our rooms. Okay, guys, everybody, let's get together. Wow. Let's share the word of God. And my dad was somebody that used to love talking so uh, sometimes I would dread it. I was like, Dad, I'm, I'm playing this game. Or Dad, I want to go do this. Or Dad, I want to go practice. Yeah. He's like, you had all day to do that. Now is the time to dig into the Word of God. It's a family altar. Yeah, That's family altar, called. exactly. Yeah, our devotional time, man. Yeah. So, so my dad was a, a big part of that journey. Um, and that's why that's why I, I still do my best, you know, to, to obviously honor the Lord, but honor my father, you know, for, for being such a, you know, just a, 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 a pillar for, for our family. Wow. You know? Wow. So... Family altar is a, it's a dying tradition, to be honest, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, yeah. I remember when I was in my family, uh -huh. uh, we tried to resurrect it a couple of times. Yeah. It lasts for like a week or two, mm -hmm. and then it dies out because, you know, people, 
you know, like we're just everywhere. Sometimes we just pretend. That, yeah. I pretend that I was already slab, yeah. you know. But you know, that's a dying tradition. It, it, it is family. a discipline, man. It's very difficult. Right. It's because right. everybody has their own lives. You know, as you grow older, you get busier. That's just right. that just is a rule of thumb. You know, it happens, and so. But my dad, as soon as he knew we were all home, bam, he'd call us all down. Oh man! You know, my mom and it was it was six of us at that you know at that wow. time. Now wow. we have my niece, you know my little, my my niece Charisma, mm-hmm. who's about to be nine in February. Wow! Uh, but even then, we my dad, you know, while he was here, would would take her to church and and share Bible verses with her in Spanish, even though she doesn't really speak that much Spanish. Right. Right. You know, she understands. But but yeah, my dad was was very much like that. So. Wow. Wow. Now I understand more that you know it comes from the way you grew up. Yeah. But it's yeah. not it's not so much so the from the very beginning, right? Mm. My 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 parents is uh, non-believers, mm. but when they met, my dad became a believers and my mom became believers because of the uh, because of the delivery of my sister, my older sister. Oh, okay. Um, but I grew up since day zero. I'm already Christians pretty wow. much. So I don't see um, you know. It's become, you know, I, I would say like this, it easy to get used to it, to get used to being, being a Christian, yeah. to get used to, okay, this is just a normalcy. So there's no more passions at times. You that's know. good. Yeah. But there, well, that's not good things because I take that for granted. And I don't see. I mean, it's good what you're sharing. It's good what you're right, sharing. Right, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah. right. Not that it's good that <laughs> yeah, you depart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I need to know that you have that. Um, personal experience with god that that carries until now yeah yeah wow that's that's amazing all right that's a good time to segue to uh our next tune we're gonna play right now uh Uh, we're gonna do drummer boy drummer boy yeah all right we're gonna do some uh music drummer boy and we're gonna come back and let's talk some more and then it's almost out (laughs) (laughs) Uh, all right this is drummer boy
All right, that's uh, our renditions of Drummer Boys. Um, drummer Boys or Drummer Boy? <laughs> drummer Boy. Drummer Boy. Yeah, drummer you, boy. you can tell that I'm not an English speaker. <laughs> no habla English. You're Salvadorian, man. El Salvadorian, eh? Yeah? Is that right? <laughs> yeah, okay, so funny story. This is, I don't know if this is one of the first instances where we met, but I remember I asked Yakub when we were in, in music school. I said, hey, man, like, good to meet you, you know, whatever. He's like, I'm like, what's your name? He's like, Yakub. He's like, cool. Where are you from? He's like, uh, El Salvador. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, El Salvador. And I start speaking in Spanish. And he's just smiling. He's like, I don't speak Spanish. I'm like, then where are you from? He's like, I'm Indonesian. I'm like, oh, okay. Got yeah. you. Akuchintakam. <laughs> well, I like to I like to tell people that I'm not Indonesian. Yeah. So they can tell me really what they think about that culture first. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I can t- ask them like, what do you think about Indonesian? I have like Indonesian friend, man. <laughs> what a prick, you know. <laughs> and they're gonna go on and on about how Indonesian is, you know. Yeah. And I'll be like, okay. So who you really is? Ah, Indonesian. Ah, <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Well. Uh, that's your fate. I'm very. It's very uh, fascinating story about your fate. Mm-hmm. What what you're up to now? What is what are you up to, in terms of uh, gigs? Yeah. And project. I know that you're doing podcasts. How yeah. did it go? And what do you see your future? What is your goal moving forward? Well, man. I mean, because of the whole pandemic, you know, I I, I eventually wanted to get to this. Um, it's just a lot quicker than I thought, and and I don't know why I took so long to really invest into recording gear. Um, I, you know, I would, I have an electric kit in my room, in my, you know, my actual bedroom, mm-hmm. where if I need to do MIDI drums or whatever, I, or, you know, what, if they want electric drums, you know, mm-hmm. I'd normally send, what, send tracks that way, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but now I've, I've gotten into recording actually in my like personal studio space, right. you know? So I just invested in, you know, buying a whole bunch of microphones for the drums, uh, you know, so I can track from home, do possibly lessons through Zoom, you know, if, that, if right. that's an option because of the way that the music industry is heading so far right. from where we can tell, a lot of stuff is going to be done from home more than it was before. Right. We were talking about this earlier where home studios is not anything new. It's been right. around for a lo- for many years now, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I feel like that's being utilized that much more because people are trying to avoid personal contact, contact yeah. you know, because of the whole pandemic, you know. Will it last forever? I, I, I'm, I don't think so. You know, I, I think at some point we'll go back to some type of normalcy. Right. Hopefully. Um, you know, hopefully for, especially for, for, you know, people that do music full time, like, right. like us, you know, but we have to reinvent what we're doing. Exactly. You know, we exactly. can't just, just, just depend on live music coming back because what if it doesn't come back for another year? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. We're nine months into this. And so we have to figure that out, you know? Right. So, so aside from podcasting, you know, and hopefully that being a, another source of passive income one day, you know, um, uh, I'm getting- it will. Yeah, very much into recording. So that that's something right. I'm very much looking forward to. Um, and and funny enough, I already have a session next week, and they're asking me to wow. record at home, send them the tracks. You know, we're gonna go back and forth, and then what, the actual day of the recording, I have to come out here. Right. But at least I have that availability. Right. It's been right. asked me, I don't know, countless times. Do you have a way to record at home? And right. I actually tell everybody, no, I don't. Right. No, I don't. Right. But if I'm trying to do this. As now, a musician, full time, you have yeah. to be. Now it's a different story. Exactly, right? yeah, you have to yeah. be available in, in in every regard, you know. And so, yeah. yeah. That, that. Well, for a lot of people, maybe for my audience, probably uh, a lot of them are in Indonesia, uh, probably doesn't know that he's a badass drummer. Like he's a great drummer, solid CCM. Like I don't see a lot of people playing uh, a great drummer, especially who have a lot of facility that still put so much respect to a simplicity and then because he talked about the simplicity and that much, rich, uh, that much respect that he put into every every hit that he does and he's great and his gospel chop <laughs> is amazing. The ones that we use over and over, you're talking about those? No, yeah. no, but whatever you did, you know, like, man, that was amazing. <laughs> And then yeah, in salsa and then Latin music, man. Yeah, I could. That I could was good, man. On and on. Dude, that. you're killing it though, man. I, I I've seen you. I mean, remember when we were doing the recitals? Yeah. I mean, you you. I think you went from not playing any Latin, right? No. To killing it, bro. I'm practicing a week, nothing but salsa. <laughs> My hand hurts, cramping yeah. like the Montunos. Montunos, yeah. man, it's killing me. Yeah. But I have great teachers that you know, like just. Yeah, Alberto, time. man, Carlos, yeah. I know, Ormado, Ormado, yeah. phenomenal oh, instructor. Goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Way too underrated, mm-hmm. to my I agree. to my to my knowledge. Like, yeah, Omar Ruiz. Look at you up. are Venezuelan. amazing. Yes, yeah. 
Yeah, he's actually the reason why I come back to music. Did you know that? In, wow. Yeah. So, when, so wait, you're talking about when you went to the school, you no, knew he was teaching there? Or? No, because actually I was studying accounting at that time. I was like, okay, I'm not going to play music anymore. I'm going to do something. I'm going to study something that got to make money, so wow. to speak. I was in accounting and I, I knew him when I was in Houston uh, three years prior. And I saw him like on big potato, the video on yeah, big potato. Yeah. And I was like, man, I want to be like him when I grow up. Oh and I, goodness. when I was in LA, I, I messaged him like, I want to have lessons. And he's the one that introduced me to the school. Wow. So man. I have forever grateful for him, That's you know, amazing. because had he not uh, tell me about the school and, uh, and the opportunity, I wouldn't gone to music school again. Yeah. And yeah. I probably already do your taxes by now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good, man. Give me back some money, <laughs> right, man. Every right? year I got to pay, so. Right? But, yeah, I'm grateful for that. But, yeah, he's a great uh, drummer. And I'm pretty sure people from Indonesia can send you something and then you can. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll yeah. have, I mean, I could probably give you some information so you can yes. add, attach it yes. to, to content. I'll, I'll put it uh, in the description below for sure, but also somewhere around here. Hovering. <laughs> yeah. So that's about uh, Kevin. Yeah. So thank you, man. Hey, thank you so much for coming. Of course. Anything else you want to tell us about anything else? Uh, anything else I want to share? Well, man, I I want to encourage you guys. I know we live in a difficult time. I know things are, especially here in California. Is I wish I could say things are getting easier, but we're actually having the safe at home order again. Cases yeah. are going up. As of today, today is December 8th. December 8th, yeah, 2020. Right. My encouragement for you guys is, especially those that, I know sometimes it's more difficult on the mind than it is on anything else, you know? So my encouragement is if you guys are struggling in any way, reach out to your friends, reach out. If they're not reaching out to you, do your due diligence to reach out to them. I know it's sometimes you don't want to share that you're going through a tough time, but reach out to them. Let them know how you're doing. Re ask them what they're doing. You know, you guys can communicate through Zoom. Uh, you know, there's all different types of social media platforms you can talk, you know, to, to your friends about, you know, um, and stay in touch with them, you know, because everybody's going through this pandemic in their own individual ways, especially for musicians. I know it's been hard, you know, but, but stay encouraged that, that eventually we're going to get through this. And I'm looking forward to that day where we can make live music again in front of a decent sized audience. Right. So right. it'll be fun. Well, thanks, Kevin, for coming yeah. over to my place and having some jam and talk. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, everything's getting uh, go back to normal, and yeah. then I'll see you at church sometime next week. Sounds right? good, man. All right. Thank you, Coop. Thanks, Alrighty. guys, for uh, watching. And please hit the like button and subscribe button and the notification bell. And don't forget to check out his podcast, Killer Podcast, with a great uh, guest and friends that or come uh uh common friends what do you call that uh the friends edition okay yeah yeah, yeah. that's the friends editions that he has uh which you're great. gonna be on pretty soon so, oh, so okay get ready for that <laughs> well the thing is i watched that and then actually i heard a lot of story that i wouldn't know mm. before well i don't want to tell no, here. No, no, no. i don't want to spoil it here so watch it because that's a great insight into a mind of a musicians a mind of a, a starting musicians yeah. plus those who are on top so you can see where yeah you are right now because many of my audience are actually also aspire musicians wow that's good and that's there's good. there i'm shout out to Bara. he's a 12 years old uh, composer wow and an amazing composer already to begin with and he reached out to me and telling me all about his aspirations and he sent me his uh compositions and it's already amazing. So, man, that's I so hope cool. this gem talk could inspire a lot of people. Don't worry where you are right now. Be grateful and yeah. don't stop working hard and study hard. Yeah, definitely. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.